to Old Man Metal's Musings, the official podcast of Old Man Metal. Old Man Metal's Musings is a proud part of the Rat Style Review Network. And now, without further ado... Hey, this is Old Man Metal. I hope everyone's doing well, and welcome to the 11th episode of Old Man Metal's Musings, the official podcast of Old Man Metal. And today we're going to take a look at the top 10 metal albums of 2020, my opinion, of course, and we're going to do that part live, sort of. So thank you for joining me today, and thanks to everyone who watched the 10th episode. I took a look at three hot sauces from Big Reds, Lucky Dog, and Volcanic Peppers, as well as my first ever full-length music video for a track off of Grave Ripper's debut EP, Complete Blinding Darkness. I really enjoyed making that episode, and I've gotten a lot of really good feedback about it, so check it out if you haven't seen it. As always, I want to give a shout out to AJ Nemesis for the theme music. That's a song called Through the Electric Mist. AJ is an ace guitarist and independent musician, and he's provided music for the show since day one. The link to his channel is in the show notes, so please go and check him out. So the business of the day is my top 10 album list for 2020. This is the third year running that I've done it as an hourly countdown on Twitter, always on New Year's Day. And last year I stepped things up a bit by taping a screen capture of me doing each tweet. And then I shot video of me talking about each album, edited it all together, and posted it as a video that came out just before midnight that same day. And that was the fastest I ever shot, edited, and released a video. So that's what I'm going to try to do again. If you see this video post on New Year's Day, well, I pulled it off again. If not, it won't lag New Year's Day by much, or else I'll have to reshoot this intro. So, without further ado, my top 10 albums of 2020. Rounding out the bottom at number 10 is Invictus Mortem. This is the third LP and the first in 10 years from Bahrain's Smoldering and Forgotten, and it's nine longish tracks of proper black and death metal, treating of old conflicts and ancient evils. The music emanates an aura of struggle, torment, and grand infernal triumph, using lots of tremolo picking, death metal chugs, and Swedish-style thematic lead work, all offset by the occasional crushing down-tempo chord-heavy passage or up-tempo thrashy bit or fragment of black metal morbidity. The predominant tremolo-picked riffs are derived from both the death metal and black metal parentage, and they form the backbone of the beast, as well as providing a lot of its atmosphere. Well-filled death metal drumming provides a basalt foundation and frequently elevates the feel by employing high-speed rolling double bass under slower riffing and vocal phrasing. This tempo differential creates epic feeling tension. Different tempo riffing is often stacked this way as well. A dirty, buzzsaw, somewhat murky production creates a dark, heavy, leaden feel throughout. Touch points are as varied as Goat Whore, Corpsest, Unleashed, and Morbid Angel. Standout tracks are Cult de R, Tartarus, and Impaled Heads. Coming in at number 9 is Solitude and Madness. The 16th full-length album from Polish death metal veterans Vader shows they're as solid as ever and continuing in the vein of the past half-dozen albums. It's an 11-track clinic and thrashy yet crushing hits you like a ton of bricks modern European death metal, and it has everything you want from Vader. It's a brutal blend of modern and old-school Swedish-inspired death metal riffing, sharpened by congenital thrash tendencies, and densified by a modern brutal tech influence and machine gun drumming, all with their characteristic massive yet sharp modern production. At 29 minutes and 29 seconds, it's the shortest of Vader's current era LPs, edging out 2016's The Empire by over three and a half minutes and with an extra track to boot. As a result, the pacing on the album is relentless and the songs themselves are brief, brutal, and to the point, like a bludgeoning in the night. Standout tracks are Emptiness, Final Declaration, and Bones. Taking the number 8 slot, we have On Chains of Doom. The third LP from Switzerland's Total Annihilation is eight tracks of great Scandinavian-style death thrash. 
Its crushing mid- and up-tempo thrash bass riffing and death metal tremolo pick sections played against more down-tempo passages, usually either mosh parts or dismal death metal bits. They're all expertly welded together in diverse chorus juggernauts that bristle with death metal-inspired structural flourishes like spikes on a set of armor. These steamroller songs are driven by a blend of traditional and thrash drumming, buttressed by double bass runs and D-beat style patterns, and song length ebbs and flows between mid-length and long, but none of them overstay their welcome. Production is consistent with the style, blackish, slightly top-heavy, with extra crunch on the guitars. Standout tracks are Reborn in Flesh, On Chains of Doom, and Tunnel Rotten. And at number 7, we have Rebirth by Blasphemy. Midnight's fourth LP and first on Metal Blade seeds no ground. Cleveland black speed metal madman Athenar baptizes the unholy union with ten tracks of filthy sleazy metal born of motorhead and venom performed with his usual aplomb and swagger. As always, the songs are short, remorseless verse chorus affairs that leave nothing but carnage and a whiff of brimstone in their wake. The album flow accelerates like a rocket ride to hell and then fetches up against mid-album Bulwark's rising scum and warning from the Reaper as speed metal chugs, power chords, and tremolo pick notework vie for dominance with the wickedest leads this side of Satan's titty bar. Up-tempo, stripped down, and gleefully depraved, it's midnight. Standout tracks are Fucking Speed and Darkness, Rebirth by Blasphemy, and The Sounds of Hell. Taking the coveted number six slot is Scriptures. British death metal veterans Benediction are back with their first LP in 12 years, and it's consistent with the best of modern European style death metal. Scriptures is 12 tracks of thrashy, chug laden, mid tempo, mid length death metal that most favors Vader and Unleashed, and those are some big shoes right there. Consistently great riffs, all seamlessly fit together, make this album a standout, and spot on instinctive use of tempo and feel changes keep your attention riveted from start to finish. This album is a top-tier exemplar of modern Euro death metal with world-class musicianship and great production, and it will wreck your neck. Standout tracks are Scriptures and Scarlet, Tear Off These Wings, and We Are Legion. Halfway to the top at number five is Lust to Lynch. An intro plus nine barn-burning tracks from Germany's Skeleton Pit comprise the best retro thrash that came my way this year. Out of the ballpark albums like this one are the reason that I even bother to wade through all the tepid, try-hard, wiffle-ball retro thrash that comes around. There's always a lot of great new hybrid thrash out every year, black thrash, death thrash, the newer crossover thrash style, but the pure retro pizza and beer thrash crop is usually a pretty mediocre one year after year. The occasional gems, though, they're worth all the effort, and Lust of Lynch is a true gem. It's lethal, high-velocity, old-school blitzkrieg thrash that evokes early exodus, flotsam, forbidden, and overkill. The riffing is 100% on point. The spine-crushing chugs and razored power chords are irresistibly compelling pit fodder. Rapid-fire, hardcore-influenced thrash drumming drives whiplash field changes and sick pit-stirring mosh parts, and even the production thinks it's still 1985. If this album doesn't make you want to break shit, check your pulse. Standout tracks are Violent Raid, Like Vultures, and Challenge to Kill. Coming in at number four is Eisenzeit. Eisenzeit is the second LP from German death metal or sculpture, and between the similarity in one, the vocal style, which is a very hoarse, tormented, growlish shout, two, the subject matter, World War history, three, the feel of the album, which is martial and by turns maudlin and triumphant, four, the riffing, crushing death chugs, somber chug and power chord combinations, and lethal up-tempo tremolo picking, five, the haunting thematic lead work, and six, the grimy but tight modernist production with sunlight worship on the guitars, this album is bound to draw the obvious and well-earned comparisons to Hail of Bullets. That's a fair cop, and it's a good thing. There's not enough of this sort of bleak, crushing, doomish death metal in the world, and Scalpture are damn good at it. Standout tracks are Eisenzeit, Of Daredevils and Doughboys, and Ebbs into Stalemate.
Taking the number three slot, we have Forest of Chaos. The second LP from French old school death metalers Red Dead, Forest of Chaos is an inhumanly battering blend of austere, stripped down brutal tech death metal and premium black death. In addition, there are plenty of thrashy bits, demolition grade chugs, and well placed tempo changes to keep things nice and lively and to provide a nice grounding counterpoint to the techish syncopated riffing, sinister tremolo picking, and odd timings. The result is a world-class clinic in manslaughter that synergistically combines the best elements of two very different styles of death metal, yielding ten well-crafted musical bulldozers that tell the ghastly tale of a mortiferous French forest that ensnares the unwary and the savage lust mord that roams and rends within it. Musicianship is top-notch, particularly the drumming, and the vocals and production are both a perfect fit for the brutal tech parentage. Standout tracks are Forest of Flesh, Butcher's Prey, and Wind of Chaos. Coming in at number two is By Thunder and Lightning. Verbal Razor's third LP is a 12-track, 33-minute, pissed-off rocket ride. High-speed, low-drag tracks blend hardcore heavy crossover, thrash, and bits of speed metal into a full-tilt pummeling whirlwind of aggression that never lets up. Guitar is the name of the game, a masterfully executed combination of chunky, thrashy chugs and Bay Area power chord riffing, crossover chugs that would do SOD proud, some nice tremolo abuse, and an extra heavy dose of bouncy kinetic hardcore riffing. And leads? There are shit tons of leads, all shapes and sizes, and all of them perfectly placed and seemingly indispensable. The bright, ballsy bass locks in the low end with a hyper chug rumble, occasionally emerging briefly to seize the spotlight in a hardcore style bass break, and the drums reflect the heavy hardcore influence as well, inevitably switching to up-tempo D-beats when it's time to push things forward. In keeping with the music, the vocals are fast-phrased, hoarse, hardcore shouts, and the production is completely consonant with the style. Standout tracks are Trash, Alcohol, and Cross the Line. And finally, taking album of the year for 2020 is Power Trip, Live in Seattle. Simply put, this independent, digital-only live release captures one of the best modern thrash bands on the planet in their prime, harnessing the band's raw energy as only the best live recordings can do. Excellent audio engineering from the live signal chain through mixing and mastering recreates their studio sound admirably well, getting the most out of a really solid set list and a spot-on performance. The set list alone would make this album of the year, but combined with the production and the performance, I think if this LP gets a wider physical release, it will eventually be regarded as one of the classic live metal albums. It's that good. Standout tracks are Executioner's Tax, Crucifixation, and Manifest Decimation. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for joining me today and listening to me talk about my favorite albums from 2020. I'm going to try to do something a little different next and take a look at my top five EPs for the year, which I don't normally do. But for now, I hope you enjoyed my top 10 list, and if you did, please take a second and give the video a like. It's really important, and it's an easy way to say thanks for all the time and work that went into this video, which was a good amount. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. Just click the subscribe button and then click the notifications bell. In closing, for this time, I'm Old Man Metal. Thanks again for joining me. If you enjoyed it, tell your friends. If your friends don't like it, get new friends. Until next time, keep those horns up high. Y'all take care. Old Man Metal's Musings. 
All material depicted is the intellectual property of the copyright holders. Any resemblance to actual persons living or dead is a goddamn shame. Thank you for joining us. Looking for some new podcasts to listen to? Well, Rat Sound Review Network has plenty of shows to choose from. Like Rat Sound Review, where they discuss the latest rock and metal news, as well as interviews and albums. Album vs. Album, the King Diamond Podcast, with Wayne Noon, Greg Noggle, and sometimes this guy. Smack him a gob! Ralph Vieira is also on our network with the Vieira Vault. There's also Old Man Metal's Musings, where he discusses heavy metal and beer. Music is Life with Lou Mavs. The Right Opinion for Those Who Love Politics, a South Park podcast called Suck My Balls, The Infinite Fringe, a watch-along wrestling show called Beyond Bushido, ex Stradivarius guitarist, The Timo Tolki podcast, and The Great Harry Barnett with I Don't Even Like podcast and The Laugh Cast. So check out RatsoundReview.com or search RatsoundReview on YouTube, Podbean, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, and more.